And with Washington's authority, he will then become the true hero of Saratoga. The general in charge at that point is a man by the name of Horatio Gates. I've mentioned him before. Arnold got along with him in 1776, but Gates and Arnold were not getting along in 1777, primarily because Gates was concerned that Washington favored Arnold over him. Again, another long and involved story. And Gates is really not very happy that Arnold's there. Arnold's in charge of the left wing. He's the second in command at Saratoga. And he and Gates start to have disputes and problems. On September 19th, the British advance, like in a reconnaissance in force, into that American line on beam of sights. Gates wants to stay back. Americans can't really fight unless they're in a fixed position. He says, so, we're not going to go out and face them. Arnold said, if you do that, they'll sweep right through the American line. They'll drive us into the Hudson River. We must go and face them. Washington will relent and let Arnold go out and do a little bit of the fighting that day. And in the process... Arnold will actually hold his own and actually be beating the British. When he comes back and he asks for further support, only about a third of the American army is engaged in this battle. He said, send more troops. We'll defeat them right now today. And rather than doing that, Gates reprimands Arnold for the fight and removes him from the field in the middle of the battle at the end of the day. So at the end of the day, the American forces are sort of well, I don't want to say defeated, they have to retreat. The British have sort of a pyrrhic victory in the sense that they control the battlefield. Um, sometime this field is called Freeman's Farm. Now Gates and Arnold go at it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And what I can tell you is it's unpleasant. Gates will finally remove Arnold from command, confine him to quarters. The British, meantime, have to figure out how to get around the Americans, and time is passing. We're into early October, 7th of October. The British will send out another reconnaissance in force. Gates will finally agree to engage them. He will send out forces under Daniel Morgan. I mentioned him before in terms of the Canadian expedition. Definitely one of the top American fighters, no doubt about that. And it's sort of like a draw out in the fields. Arnold knows a battle is going on, and finally he knows, even though he has been suspended from command, relieved of command, he will go out and he'll try to lead the Americans to victory, and that's exactly what he did on October 7th. Arnold will go out, he'll help rally the American troops, they will drive into the British line. At one point off to the left in what is called Bremen's, Redoubt, Arnold sees that that's a possible opening there. He will move to the left. He rides down a line. There are bullets, that is, musket balls flying all around him. He leads the troops into this redoubt. In the process, he is shot off the horse that he is riding. The horse crashes down on him, dead. Crashes down on the self-same leg that had been wounded at Quebec for which Arnold was already doing some limping. Apparently, there was a musket ball also entered that leg. It destroyed his left leg. Arnold is writhing in pain on the battlefield. But the British line is broken. The retreat is begun. And on the 18th of October, Burgoyne will surrender. Great American victory! This great victory brings the French into the war openly on behalf of the Americans, providing the critical difference in troop strength and in fighting power, providing a navy, in supporting the Americans. We don't want to underrate the role of the French in helping to bring victory to the American War for Independence. <laughs> well, where's Arnold? Let me put it this way. On the 7th of October, Arnold is going to be, begin to be hauled off to a military hospital somewhat to the south in Albany. Gates, during the battle, the man that Congress will declare the hero of Saratoga, 
Congress will mint a medal to him, rarely given medal, to Horatio Gates as the hero of Saratoga. Where was Gates? He was a half a mile behind the battlefield in his headquarters having an argument with a wounded British officer about the merits of American independence. He wasn't even near the battlefield, the so-called hero of Saratoga. Arnold isn't in that great drawing of the surrender of Burgoyne because he was in a military hospital. He was there for the next three or four months trying to recover. At one point he told one of the doctors, if you try to saw off my leg, I'll kill you. You don't take my leg, no matter what. They then hooked up this kind of a box. They put the leg in a box, the shredded leg in a box. In the end, it doesn't ever heal correctly. Arnold will limp the rest of his life. He had to wear a special shoe because this leg is now two to three inches shorter than his right leg. He'll live on crutches and canes the rest of his life, all given to the American cause. But trust me, at this point, he's begun to become disillusioned and even bitter. All those problems with Congress about his good name, his honor being passed over from command for, for a higher command have begun to embitter him about, is this the cause? Is this what I gave myself for? Where they don't understand the fundamental principles of merit? Was it really that bad with the British? Maybe I overreacted. What happens is Congress doesn't have the guts. They've restored Arnold's major generalship or given him his major generalship because of an action that I've left out of the story before the Saratoga engagements. But they haven't restored his seniority. The question is, will Congress do that? Finally, they dump the assignment off on Washington. They don't have the courage to face Arnold, who's half dead in a military hospital. And so they tell Washington, we'll let him know that we've restored his seniority over those five other individuals as a testament to his good service. Now, we're going to go ahead and credit Gates with the victory because we like him and we're not sure about Arnold. Well, <laughs> what was Arnold's reaction? Washington then He's so busy, he's overwhelmed. But finally, right, Arnold said, your seniority's back in January of 1778. The battles occurred in September and October. Washington gets around to it in January. What was Arnold's response? He waited six weeks before he wrote back to Washington in one of the most incredible letters in his life story that I've ever run across. He thanks the commander-in-chief for his solicitation. He thanks for him for having supported him in the past, as Washington had done. Washington had told off, well, really not tell off, but it mildly suggested a number of congressmen. He made a mistake by passing over Arnold. He's the best I've got. I need his support back a year before. But Arnold now does this. He writes the letter and he said, I just want you to know that Your Excellency, well, I know you will do the very best for your cause. And you will find some way to bring your cause. Your, your, your is in this letter. Your cause, your involvement to a happy resolution for everyone. He didn't say to American victory. What did he just say? He said, it's not my cause, it's your cause. You have treated me, I've fought, I bled, I gave everything, I gave up my career. I am in the process of becoming a very poor person. I've given part of my fortune to the cause. We didn't go into that, but it's true. He's having his doubts, to say the least. And that's all going to come to a head as we now move into the final phase of Benedict's, Benedict Arnold's military career for the American cause of liberty.